Sometimes you may want to hide something from the URL and make it shorter. For example, if you have some query parameters which quickly become too many query parameters. Today we'll see together two examples on how to use route masking in Tanslag Router so that you know which approach is better for your own use case. This is chapter 8 of the Tanslag Router series. Subscribe if you haven't already and let's get started. The first example is a form with multi steps. You can see now that we have a query parameter that is the username that is shown here. And when I go to the next step and I keep going, you see that also the step is displayed here. And in this case, we want to actually hide this step from the URL so that even if you keep going to different steps, well, this is never shown in the URL. Before doing that, let's have a quick look at the code. First of all, we have a simple route that has a component and a valid search property. This is basically to handle query parameters or search parameters. And chapter three of my series goes specifically into how this function works. So I'll be quite faster here. The only thing that matters for you today is that here we have a type with an optional value that is steps and a required value that is username as string. Moving on, we have a simple component that has a prevent next functions that are in fact all doing this move function that performs a navigate on the same route but with a new step parameter. With prev, we go back by one step, and with next, well, you guess, we go on the next step. And what is the step variable doing? Well, here we get it from use search, and here we simply use it to conditionally render all the different steps. We also have two buttons doing prev and doing next. And that's really it, those are the steps. So the scenario is really simple. And like I said, the goal is to hide only this parameter from the URL. Here the library offers two different approaches, one that is imperative and the other that is declarative. Let's see the imperative first. And to do that, here in the navigate function, we also have a mask parameter. And the content of this parameter will be basically the mask that is being applied to our navigation. In this case, here I can add a mask. And here there's an error because it says you're masking on a navigation, but your destination route needs search because it has some mandatory search parameters. So here I also need to add search. And like I said here, I want to define the mask that I'm going to apply. So we have a username property, which I want to keep as is. I could write username, colon username, but this is just a shorthand. And in this case, I want step to be undefined. So this is the mask I'm gonna apply every time I navigate through this move function. Let's see if it works. Here we're still with step equals to two, but now if I start navigating, you see that step disappeared. So I can freely keep moving. The step is obviously always stored somewhere. We'll see that in a moment, but it is not visible in the URL. And the really cool thing is that here, if I refresh the page, even though I don't have the step defined here, I do not lose the real value underneath. And this is because the information is actually stored in the navigation API of the browser. So I can safely navigate here refresh the page and I never lose the information about the current step. This already works, but we can make it a little bit better. Here you can see that for the search option, I use the function instead of an object. And the thing is here, if I got a dozen other parameters like username, I have to define them all. Otherwise the library that is type safe will let me know, hey, something is missing, for example, username. And the solution here is to adopt a function definition instead of the object so that I can say that search takes all the previous parameters, but this time step is undefined. So I highly recommend you using this kind of syntax. But now let's say that when I'm outside this form, I want to go directly on the step two when I click here, because here obviously, even if I leave from step two, I go out and I go in again, I always begin from step zero. The first thing you might want to do is inside your link, let's say I want to go on step two, and here I can obviously add step Two, and this already works, but it has a problem. Let me show you. If I click on steps, I'm indeed on step two this time, but this is also shown here on the URL, which is something I might not want. And here, obviously, if I keep navigating, the parameter goes away, but every time I click here, it goes back. And one extra thing is that here I'm on step two and the URL is marked as active. But if I click away, this immediately becomes inactive. Let's fix that first. On the link object, I've got active props, but I've also got active options. And in this case, I can specify more precisely if I want to match exactly this URL or if I want to include the search parameters. If I say false here, it means that even if the query parameters are different, I still want this route to be active. And with this simple change, you can already see it. If I go on step two and I keep navigating, 
you see that the route is still marked as active. But we still haven't fixed the first problem, that is when clicking here on this link, we see step, and it was something we wanted to avoid. The first solution may be, hey, I've got here a mask object, what if I use the same syntax here in the link? Well, this, after fixing some of the syntax, is fine. But this means that every time I navigate into the steps page, I always have to specify the mask. And this is the main downside of the imperative option. That's why there's also a declarative API, which we're gonna see in a second. So, first of all, let's remove this mask option here, and let's also remove this one, basically going back to the initial scenario. We can now go on our app definition, and from here, we're gonna use a different function that is create route mask. With this function, we can say basically the same thing we wanted to define our mask right after passing our route tree. So here we say from, and we wanted to go from steps, we say to, and we're going to go to the steps route, and there's still something missing that is search. Because once again, this is type safe, and type rate knows that if I want to navigate here, I also need to pass at least the username parameter. So here we're gonna use the same syntax we used previously to preserve the current params and only set step to undefined. I can now hit save, and in order to activate this mask, I should put it in a constant called taps mask. And now I have to let my router know that there are some route masks, and this is actually an array, and this is the mask I just defined. So going back, I haven't changed basically anything. This is still the change on the header, but I can actually remove it. So the only difference from the basic scenario is that I define declaratively that there's a mask that has to be applied on this navigation. And now it doesn't matter if I go from a link in a component or if I come from a navigate function in another component. Every time I'm on the steps route, the URL will always and only have the username parameter and will never show the steps parameter. The next example comes directly from the official Tansac router docs, but since I don't know how to properly show the URL here on Stacklit. I'm gonna run it locally and show it to you. This time, as you can see, the URL is slash photos, and every time I click on an image, it opens a model, and you see the URL is only slash one. But in fact, if I click here, you see that the real URL slash one is this entire page, because here the actual URL is photos slash one slash model. So here, route masking is entirely hiding a part of the actual URL. And this is a great example to also show the unmask on reload option. Let's see how it works. This is the code we're gonna use. It is all in one file and uses the code base definition, which, by the way, I made a video on code base definition, but everything else remains the same. For example, here I can search for mask, and the first hit is the link component wrapping the image. For reference, it is the link component wrapping all those images. And here there's a comment saying that if you want to use a mask, you can use the imperative definition, but it's generally better to just use the declarative one. So let's have a look. If I keep searching for mask, we'll find once again the creator of mask function. And this time, instead of defining from and to the same path, that is what we did earlier in the other example, here you will find that it is from slash model to the URL without slash model. And you also notice that param has true as value. It is not a function, it is not an object, and true means take all the params you had and keep them in the new route even after masking. With the definition, we know that even if I refresh the page, I always stay on the masked route, and the only way to get out is to opening it on a new tab. And that's where the unmask on reload parameter comes in. For example, here I can add a mask on reload and set it to true, and what this parameter does is basically get rid of the mask and navigate to the actual route when you reload. For example, here, if I now hit reload, if I want to stay on the model, I have to be on the slash model route. And here, obviously, if I reload the page, I'm always on the model. But instead, if I'm on the short masked route, if I hit reload, I will inevitably get out of the model and go on the actual page. So this is what a mask on reload is doing. Every time there's a mask and you reload the page, you end up on the actual page. That is in fact what Twitter or LinkedIn or other social media are doing every time you click on a photo and you reload the page. The last thing I wanted to show you today is that if you're using the Tansac Router DevTools, you always know if you're on a masked route and you can see it with the mask indicator showing the real path that is being rendered on the page 
and the masked version that is shown instead on the browser. And this makes me think I should talk about the Tanstack Router Dev Tools in another video, which is a great reason for you to subscribe to the channel now to not miss any future video about Tanstack Router. And that was it for route masking. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to hit like and see you in the next one. Bye.